Welcome to another great video by Exam Sam Study Aids in Media. In this video, we're going to show a Work Keys practice test. Get free Work Keys practice test problems at examsam.com. In this video, you will see Work Keys practice test math problems from levels 3 to 7. The questions are organized from the easiest, level 3, to the most difficult, level 7. The problems will be shown for 5 seconds. Please press pause to take time to solve. The answers are provided after each question. Question 1 The correct answer is D. In order to express a fraction as a percentage, you need to divide and then express the result as a percentage. For the first step, treat the line in the fraction as the division symbol. So 5 fourteenths 5 over 14 equals 5 divided by 14 equals 0.357. For step 2, express the result from step 1 as a percentage. So we need to move the decimal point two places to the right and add the percent sign. 0.357 becomes 35.7%. Question 2. The correct answer is B. Express both amounts as decimal numbers and then multiply to solve. Fourteen and a quarter pounds times thirty-six cents a pound is equivalent to fourteen point two five pounds times point three six. When we multiply that out then we get five dollars and thirteen cents for our answer. Here is question three. The correct answer is E. Step 1. Calculate how many minutes there are in 40 hours. We know there are 60 minutes in each hour, so multiplying 40 hours by 60 minutes an hour gives us 2,400 minutes in total. Step 2. Divide the amount of prescriptions into the previous result to get the rate. So we have 2,400 minutes altogether. During that time, she has filled 250 prescriptions, so dividing as shown, we arrive at 9.6 minutes per prescription. Here is question 4. The correct answer is D. For step 1, take 66 units of cement powder for the current batch and divide by the 3 units stated in the original ratio. You remember the original ratio was 2 units of sand to every 3 units of cement powder. So 66 divided by 3 is equal to 22. For step 2, multiply the result from step 1 by the 2 units of sand. Again, that was from the original ratio. 2 units of sand for every 3 units of cement powder. So taking those two units of sand and then multiplying, we get 44 units of sand for our answer. Here is question 5. The correct answer is E. From the formula, we can see that 1 cubic yard is equal to 27 cubic feet. To solve, we multiply the amount of 60 cubic yards from the question by 27 from the formula above. 60 cubic yards times the conversion factor of 27 cubic feet per cubic yard, and we arrive at our solution, 1,620 cubic feet. Here is question 6. The correct answer is C. From the formula provided, we know that the circumference of a circle is roughly equal to 3.14 times the diameter. The problem states that the diameter of the tractor tire is 46 and a half inches. So we use that value in the formula to solve. 3.14 
times the diameter of 46.5 inches gives us a circumference of 146.01 inches. Here is question 7. The correct answer is A. For step 1, convert the weight of the full box from pounds and ounces to just ounces. We know from the formula provided that 1 pound is equal to 16 ounces, so 8 pounds and 5 ounces is equal to 8 pounds times 16 ounces per pound plus the 5 ounces that we have left over. When we multiply 8 by 16, we get 128 ounces plus the 5 ounces is equal to 133 ounces altogether for the weight of the full box. Moving on to step 2, the problem states that the box weighs 7 ounces when it's empty. So we need to subtract the weight of the empty box from the weight of the full box to get the weight of the product inside the box. So 133 ounces total weight minus 7 ounces for the box gives us 126 ounces for the product inside the box. For the third step then, we need the weight of each of the units inside the box. The problem tells us that each supplement weighs 0.75 ounces. So taking the total weight from the previous step, we divide by the weight per unit to determine how many units are in the box. 126 ounces total weight for the product divided by 0.75 ounces per unit gives us a result of 168 units. Here is question 8. The correct answer is C. In this problem, the weights are taken in pounds. From the formula, we can see that 1 kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. However, we're converting pounds to kilograms, not kilograms to pounds. So, we need to do the formula in reverse. In other words, the formula tells us 1 kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. So in that case, you are simply reading the formula from left to right, and the conversion factor then is multiplied. So we would multiply by 2.2 pounds if we had kilograms and we were converting them to pounds. However, we're given pounds and we're converting them to kilograms, so we're reading the formula from right to left. In other words, in this case we need to divide by the conversion factor. So dividing the pounds by 2.2, we can make the conversion then. The formula that we would need to use would be kilograms equals pounds divided by 2.2. Here is question 9. The correct answer is B. For the first step, convert the mixed numbers to decimals and then multiply. So here we have a lawn that measures 50 and a quarter feet by 60 and a quarter feet. Converting that to decimals, we get 50.25 times 60.25. We know that we need to multiply those together to get our square feet, in other words, to get the area of the lawn. So multiplying those together, we get 3,027.5625 square feet. Moving on then to the second step. The price is given in square yards, so we need to convert the square feet from our previous step to square yards. We know that one square yard is equal to nine square feet. So 3,027.5625 square feet divided by 9 square feet per square yard gives us 336.3958 square yards for the size of the lawn. For the third step then we need to calculate the cost. Here we have an area of 336.3958 square yards. 
and our cost of the fertilizer is $5.25 a square yard. So we need to multiply that out and we get then the answer of $1,765.92 and we can round this to $1,766. Here is question 10. The correct answer is A. For the first step, you need to calculate the volume of the sphere when it's full, and you need to do that calculation in cubic inches. We know that the tank is 72 inches across on the inside, so that will be our diameter. Radius is half of the diameter, so half of 72 is 36. Looking then again at our formula for the volume of a sphere, 4 over 3 times 3.14 times the radius cubed, and then putting in our figures, 4 thirds times 3.14 times our radius of 36 cubed. Multiplying that out, we get 195,333.12 cubic inches. Remember that anything to the power of 3 is multiplying a number by itself two times, so 36 times 36 times 36. For step two, then, you need to calculate in cubic inches how much milk is left in the sphere. The problem tells us that the tank is 80% full of milk. Taking the volume for the full sphere that we've already calculated and multiplying that times 80%, 156,266.5 cubic inches. However, remember that the question is asking us to convert the cubic inches to gallons. So finally, we need to convert these cubic inches to gallons. Now again, the formula is converting gallons to inches, but we're converting inches to gallons, so we need to divide rather than multiply. 156,266.5 cubic inches divided by 231 cubic inches per gallon gives us our final answer of 676.48 gallons. Can we just mention here that problems with multiple conversions in them, like this one, are very common on level 7 of the work keys test. The Work Keys practice test problems you've seen in this video are free samples from our Work Keys practice test book. Please find us on Amazon. Please also visit us online at examsam.com. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.